Last week I showed you the music application running on a device and this week I'll show you some of its functionality uh, running inside the resource editor so you can actually see how that tool was developed by uh, by Magimob uh, with our assistance. Uh, notice that the UI here is reversed because of the English locale. If I switch to the Hebrew locale the UI will reverse itself and would now appear correctly. Like previously you saw buttons here were in the other way around and didn't look correctly. That's because the UI itself was designed in a way that didn't match the BIDAR requirement of the application. Uh, the entire UI, as you can see, was built uh, using the GUI Builder, and as you can see, it's pretty extensive in the amount of uh, information for every element within here. I'm going to show you several interesting elements here. The first is the About dialog, which I will show you in production right here. Notice that the animation of the About dialog here isn't correct because of animation issues in the resource editor, but on the device it looks good. Uh, as you can see, the button here is hanging in air, and if you had content right here below, which I can simulate by reducing the size of the screen actually, then you would see it right through the button. And this is actually a really neat trick. This is really just a dialog. The, the portion that opens here and the dialogue itself uh, that you can see right here, it's a dialogue, has a container right here at the bottom and this container is transparent, completely transparent. Uh, the only difference from a regular container here, as you will see, is uh, that it has a special uh, background shadow which looks like this and uh, this shadow uh, you can see it right here gives this effect now as you can see the shadow goes on top of the button right here that that's the type of fine attention to detail in this type of application so this is achieved by having the shadow embedded separately in the button. So as you can see, uh, the button itself, uh, sorry, this is, isn't the right style. This, mm, ah, it's not through the style, sorry, it's in the icon itself. So the icon is, uh, is this. And as you can see, the shadow is embedded right into the icon right here and uh, that way you get this effect where the shadow continues on top of the button. This is just a regular button that uh, has a command associated with it that effectively just uh, collapses the, uh, the actual uh, uh, dialogue when it's pressed. So this is a very cool effect. And as you can see, the dialogue itself also has the option of coming from the north. So unlike most dialogues that slide from the top, here they specified specifically that they want the dialogue to appear in the north. Very convenient and very cool effect. Here you can see, um, you know what, I'll show it to you in the catalog where it's more interesting. Uh, in the pages of the catalog we have these three buttons that you can toggle to go through uh, to different portions of the catalog to purchase music. You also have horizontal lists that allow you to slide through um, uh, the selection. And within here, you can pick the genres or the search screen. Now, uh, these are really, if you click on them, they're just radio buttons, right? They're, uh, I'll show them to you right here. Uh, that's just a radio button. It doesn't do anything more. The thing is that now radio buttons allow, allow us to act as toggle buttons. Both radio buttons and checkboxes can act as toggle buttons, which means they function exactly like they do today, only they don't render that uh, radio button circle, and they act as a pressed and unpressed button based on their state. 
The difference, obviously, between a radio button and a check uh, and a checkbox is that a checkbox is not exclusive, and a radio button belongs to a group. As you can see, they all belong to the catalog group, and that determines their selection state appropriately. So that way, if you click a radio button, it will be the only one selected. And here we can see that in catalog genres, for instance, uh, this radio button is selected by default. And the three radio button buttons are essentially duplicated to this area. Another thing of interest is to notice that the titles, we don't use the standard Lewitt title, we just ignore it completely and place uh, a standard title right here on top. Also, an interesting thing that allows complete customization for the entire look. In fact, if we look at the application itself for a second, you'll notice that the application has tabs along the bottom area right here that allow you to swipe or just move between the tab entries. And uh, these tabs specifically uh, indicate that this isn't a form. The application itself only contains a single form, and it's uh, expressed right here. This, this is the form. And the three tabs are essentially embedded containers, which is a new feature that allows us to embed a specific container into an area like, for example, tab pane, but also any modular area of the UI builder. It's a Lewitt class that's specifically built for the UI builder that's a part of Lewitt itself. Uh, and essentially it embeds, as you can see, the embedded container embeds main. And this is main, which looks exactly the same, only without the tabs, which obviously main is a container, while main UI is a form. And the same goes for catalog. Catalog is a container, and as you can see, catalog is included right here. So um, if I go to the actual catalog, right here, you will see that's a container. Now, navigation still works intelligently because it replaces, the, uh, just invokes container.replace when doing that. And this is a feature we had to do specifically for TriPlay here and Manjumob in order to allow uh, navigation here. And when we click here, you saw everything became disabled. I'll show it again. So everything became disabled so that the replace will work without an issue. Uh, this also includes several other um, interesting aspects in our design. Because effectively, when uh, you replace a container, uh, you, you can do all sorts of things a bit differently. That is, when you try to find a component, like find this component, for instance, uh, you can't just get the current form and find within it. You need to find within the container root, which means uh, programming this is quite a bit different than you would normally uh, experience uh, in the resource editor or any other similar tool. Uh, well, that's generally that the splash is incomplete and uh, lots of the other areas here are in incomplete, but I wanted to show uh, several interesting things, like for instance the player screen, which supports rotation and several other uh, nice features. So rotation is supported relatively simply by uh, providing uh, that this container, which one is it? Let's find it. Here we go. This container, which as you can see bounds right here and contains essentially this area and this area. So when we turn the phone to landscape, the this area, which is currently in the center, right, moves uh, to, um, no, sorry, it's not in the center, it's in the, mm, Ah, it remains in the center. Sorry, this area alone moves. Sorry, this is the center, so it stays in the center. My mistake. And this area is in the south, and it just moves west. 
and that effect effectively creates that that sort of behavior when we rotate to landscape so that's cool uh, this area now as you can see we have a blue gradient background uh, UI ID and blue element and all sorts it doesn't seem like much but as you can see there's no scaling here when I change the resolution so if I increase the size here or uh, change it here uh, there's no degradation in terms of the look of the application it still looks uh, pixel perfect uh, and the reason for that is the styles that we have here so this is the radial back, uh, gradient of the background and it's pretty much a standard radial uh, gradient and as you can see uh, acts at the background here on top of that we have another layer that's transparent and this is the emblem you see the sort of effect it's always centered as you can see we align the image to the center and it's a hard-coded image right here and on top of that we have another sort of uh, effect which is the swerve this sort of wave I'm not too crazy about it but um, it's a very long image which allows us to uh, to fit it also on a landscape mode of relatively large phones so that's important in that sense it's even big enough to fit on some tablets I'm guessing and on top of that we have another texture which might not be very visible here but as you can see it's lots of tiny tiny tr uh, translucent squares that are sitting on top of the entire UI to provide a sort of a textured feel so the screen doesn't seem too smooth and too clean like you often get with a radial background and this provides a sort of a more texturized feel to the UI that's hard to replicate. This is just tiled, so that isn't expensive, as some of the other elements that exist here. And so you have effectively four layers similar to a PSD, where you would have a relatively elaborate design. Personally, I think it's a bit over the top, but uh, but it's effective in conveying something uh, visually, which I guess uh, is important to some. Uh, here, the switch between the grid and the list mode is done using radio buttons. These are radio buttons just like the container. I'll talk in the future about how they implemented the grid mode. Um, I'll just, in brief, it's a container list, which is a new feature of Bluet uh, that allows them to place everything just within a grid. It just uses the standard list model and they replace it in runtime. This is done in code. It's not done in the, in the GUI builder because it's too uh, complex to do it all over the place. Uh, other than that, um, there's lots of features that aren't immediately uh, visible from here, like uh, all the search functionality and everything, but generally it's uh, pretty much as you'd expect. Um, lots of hard work in building all of these screens, I guess. Um, and that's about it. I'll talk to you next time, I guess.